Thank you. And we can do the, the, the simultaneous the translation in the, in the YouTube later on. Um, so thank you. Actually, uh, both of the things here, also the, the DevOps and visual perception and stuff that uh, I know from myself, it's something we need, and we uh, a lot, we got a lot of questions also from young robotic startups to come to ask me how we can do those kind of things. And it's uh, I think it's great tools uh, for startups who are starting or for big companies who are doing uh, robotics applications. So it's a uh, great tools uh, for development. And uh, another great tool is from Nvidia. Uh, Ilan Bell is a uh, sorry. Okay, so so it's Ilan here, and I hope I'm not Beer. <laughs> so Ilan um, Beer. So he's solution architect at Nvidia, and he's going to talk about uh, Isaac Simulator specifically for robotics, right? So he's going to give us a talk about that, so it's also a very important uh, tool. So here you go. Okay, so first of all, I'm happy to be here in uh, Israel Robotics. And uh, my name is Ilan Beer. Uh, I'm a solution architect in uh, NVIDIA. In the inception program, we're helping startups uh, with their uh, technology and uh, with other things. Uh, and I'm here to convince you that uh, uh, Israel Robotics uh, community can benefit from using NVIDIA. And uh, NVIDIA is the world's leading AI and simulation platform. And when I'm a platform, I mean that uh, we actually have the hardware and a full stack of software. The uh, hardware is either on the cloud for simulating or on the robot, mount mounted to the robot, like uh, Jetson and uh, other uh, types of hardware. And uh, when I'm talking about the uh, simulation, uh, so I'm talking about everything that has to do like uh, related to like uh, gaming, uh, rendering, uh, ray tracing, uh, physics simulation, CAD, CAD uh, applications. Uh, AI is another thing that uh, a couple of years, uh, like uh, 10 years ago, a uh, scientist saw that the hardware uh, of graphics uh, programming units uh, are very good for general purpose in the programming unit. So the, it transferred and the whole hype of uh, deep learning is running now on uh, NVIDIA's, uh, NVIDIA's car. Uh, and also the, we have also inference, inferencing in that field. So these two fields are very, very critical when you're going and you're trying to build smart robots. Now, a bit about me, I've been working in NVIDIA, uh, I've, I've been working uh, with, playing around with NVIDIA's technologies for like the past 20 years. Uh, fortunately, they hired me to play with their technology like four months ago, so I'm happy to, to, to continue. And uh, I'm coming from both of these fields. So I was doing medical simulations, uh, uh, running on a, as a graphics programmer, and uh, using the uh, uh, NVIDIA PhysX, and then I shifted to the field of uh, like a uh, sports uh, broadcast uh, with computer vision in uh, the areas of uh, CUDA and accelerating and, and uh, decoding and encoding of uh, video. And my last uh, position was uh, uh, deploying a, and uh, creating a, a in the autonomous uh, vehicle a multi uh, multi stereo uh, depth. A neural network from the cloud, a quantization, a pooling till the deployment on the, on the chip. So both of these fields, also deep learning and also simulation, also the AI and also simulation, I'm kind of familiar with. So at this talk, I'm going to try to show you uh, three robots that uh, what's, what's interesting in them that they're, they're all deployed. Yeah, the, the first one is Animal, and I'm going to take it as an example of Isaac Jim. Isaac Jim is uh, reinforcement learning. The second uh, example is Festo, uh, where it's a collaborative robot with humans, and I'm going to give an example of a Cortex, how we use Cortex with Festo. And the last one is Oblix, which is the uh, AMR, and uh, Oblix is, uh, uh, I'm going to give an example using it as a, how we use a replicator. And, it's uh, generating synthetic data. So let's begin. Okay,
technical issues. Successful development, training, and testing of complex. Yeah. Successful development, training, and testing of complex robots for real world applications demand high fidelity simulation and accurate physics. Built on NVIDIA's Omniverse platform, Isaac Sim combines immersive, physically accurate, photorealistic environments with complex virtual robots. Let's look at three very different AI-based robots being developed by our partners using Isaac Sim. Fraunhofer IML, a technology leader in logistics, uses NVIDIA Isaac Sim for the virtual development of Obelix, a highly dynamic indoor-outdoor autonomous mobile robot, or AMR. After importing over 5,400 parts from CAD and rigging with Omniverse physics, the virtual robot moves just as deftly in simulation as it does in the real world. This not only accelerates virtual development, but also enables scaling to larger scenarios. Next, Festo, well known for industrial automation, uses Isaac Sim to develop intelligent skills for collaborative robots or cobots requiring acute awareness of their environment, human partners, and tasks. Festo uses Cortex, an Isaac Sim tool that dramatically simplifies programming cobot skills. For perception, AI models used in this task were trained using only synthetic data generated by Isaac Replicator. Finally, there's Animal, a robot dog developed by a leading robotics research group from ETH, SIR, and Swiss Smile. Using end-to-end -end GPU accelerated reinforcement learning, Animal, whose feet were replaced with wheels, learned to walk over urban terrain within minutes rather than weeks using NVIDIA's Isaac Gym training tool. The locomotion policy was verified in Isaac Sim and deployed on a real Animal. This is a compelling demonstration of simulator training for real-world deployment. From training perception and policies to hardware in-loop, Isaac Sim is the tool to build AI-based robots that are born in simulation to work and play in the real world. So, uh, when uh, we want to do a end-to-end -end robotics with NVIDIA uh, off the shelf, so uh, Isaac is a great way to use it. Because Isaac uh, has also the uh, training and simulation, uh, building and uh, deployment. Now these uh, four pillars, uh, everybody understands why uh, building a robot and deploying it is, uh, is important. It's uh, really complicated and uh, it's something that you guys uh, that are working with the hardware uh, understand. But why do I need a simulation and training? So uh, a critical thing is that we want to develop uh, the robot even if uh, we don't have the parts. So sometimes uh, we, we want to like simulate the physics of the, the robot or kind of change it and that's why we have a we have simulation now sometimes also when we're training things we want to get to crazy like scenarios uh, where the safety is a uh, problematic to drive a real uh, robot there and that's what we have Isaac replicator so um, Isaac is the is the whole uh, uh, tools and uh, and, and platform, and I'm gonna focus on simulate and train. So just something to like uh, talk about Omniverse, which is kind of confusing because it might like ring a bell with Metaverse, but it's a critical thing in understanding 3D content. Now, whoever uh, tried to play around with the uh, simulations like, uh, I don't know, Gazebo or uh, Unreal, so you have in the robotics community, URDF or Step Files, uh, the, 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 the problem of versioning 3D content files that created your, your, your robot, taking it from a robot from GrabCAD and downloading it and lifting it with Unshape makes it really problematic from the conversion point of view and the versioning of the, the file itself. So NVIDIA, like back a couple of years ago, was thinking about how to create this internet of 3D so people can collaborate with the same content, with the same 3D content, and they thought about uh, using a 32-year uh, old uh, format of Pixar, and that's actually the USD that's based on the uh, Omniverse. Now, Omniverse is the basic technology under the hood of everything that has to do with 3D content, uh, and it's using the acceleration of the uh, ray tracing and uh, 
and also the uh, physics. So when you go into Omniverse, the, the first thing you want to look, download is the Isaac Singh, which is on top of the, the Omniverse. So when you download the Isaac Singh, which is pretty simple, so you have three, three things that I'd like to, to emphasize. Emphasize the connectors. You could connect your gazebo or Unreal Engine. Say you have a company that one of the guys is working with a simulator of a gazebo, and the other one is working with Unreal. You can be connected. The whole pipeline is already there for you. Their server, the whole infrastructure is NVIDIA gives it for you with the software. Now, if you want to do a kind of a, like a scripting in a Python, you have Visual Studio Code that you can be working with, or a Omnigraph, which is a visual scripting, and a, it's kind of easier to, uh, to program and do workflows. So let's get back to the three topics that uh, we wanted to talk about. So uh, we'll start with Replicator, and then uh, Jim and Cortex. So uh, when I'm looking at uh, Isaac Replicator, it's the, the main goal of it is uh, generating uh, synthetic data. And when you want to generate synthetic data, the question is why, why use Isaac? So two main things that I'd like to emphasize in, in, in Isaac uh, in relation to other uh, ways to simulate uh, synthetic data is that we were connected to RTX, which is the technology of NVIDIA. It's ray tracing in real time, which is the, vision, the visual uh, fidelity is very high, and the physics. So if you want to create a digital twin of your robot, say taking the parts and trying to uh, connect everything together so it moves in the world accurately and phys uh, physically, so that's exactly what they did. They, they created a digital twin, and then you could like, test it on collision avoidance or even do training. But that's not the only thing in Replicator. We could also generate all kinds of uh, different scenarios at the scene and uh, randomize the, the ways and, and put all kinds of like edge cases uh, on the area of the robot that it's training on for visual perception. Uh, what you get for free when you're using uh, synthetic data is that your, all your data is labeled. So uh, that's the benefit of, uh, of the synthetic data. And when you're talking about like different sensors, so we give uh, all kinds of different sensors. We give LIDAR point cloud, which is standard, fisheye, uh, and all kinds of other things. If you want, you could also kind of customize your, uh, your sensor uh, on the way you want. So this is Replicator. Uh, something that I want to mention now, but uh, I don't want to get into in-depth uh, to it because uh, tomorrow there's going to be a session, uh, there's going to be a workshop of uh, robotics that's going to go into definite is the NVIDIA's Tau Toolkit. NVIDIA provides pre-trained models that are optimized on their hardware. So if you want to download the model, you could take it and then do domain adaptation on the specific uh, environment that you want. Generate your synthetic data for your specific robot and do it. And uh, it's kind of a, the best way to go with our hardware. Okay, Isaac Jim. So reinforcement learning is a, a, is part of the machine learning, yeah? The, the main thing about it is that there's an agent and uh, he does some kind of an action in, in an environment and he gets uh, rewarded or uh, uh, punished. So here you see the animal like walking around uh, the steps and, and trying to, uh, and, and it's very impressive. So I wanted to try this out. And uh, first of all, I looked into it and I saw, wait, wait a second, reinforcement learning, it, I mean, it was there out there before, uh, before NVIDIA came. So what's, what's, what's the, the big deal about it? So the big deal about it is that 2021, what happened was that all the, uh, the, the simulation steps that were done on the CPU, they kind of transferred to, to the GPU we're using PhysX and CUDA, and also the reward and elevation. So the DNN, the, the, the network itself is all combined. So you're not moving or transferring the data from CPU to GPU, which would take a long, long time to train. So the minute you do this, you, you're able to train. And I took my computer, I have a 6000 yeah, I'm lucky to have it. So I was able to train, and I downloaded the, the get from a, from the Git Omniverse, and you, you can see here it's kind of confusing. There's an Isaac James environment, which is the a previous version that people uh, kind of used and played, uh, but, but then there's the Omniverse. So I would 
uh, uh, I would recommend to take that to uh, download the Omniverse because it's connected with Omniverse. And what I did is I kind of trained the robot. So this is on my, my, my computer, yeah? So I trained the robot, they started walking. I mean, the, the way the terrain is done is that there's a flat terrain, a kind of rigid, and then there are steps. And you see the, the robots who start after a couple of hours, they will start walking, and after about 996 epochs, wow, this is amazing. I mean, and you don't have to have any experience with a, a reinforcement learning. You just need to have experience with coding. You have the samples. It's really cool. Okay. So we got to finally got to uh, Eisen Cortex. Now, just I have two minutes. Okay, so I'll do it fast. Uh, okay, Isaac Cortex is, is, is in beta. It's not released yet, but it makes your, in, in, it makes uh, your decisions, uh, uh, complex decisions more easier. So if I'm looking at uh, auto, uh, autonomous vehicles, you can see that robots uh, are similar, but are in an unstructured environment. They're working in an unstructured environment. So on the left part, you have three like layers. You have the perception layer that's uh, uh, getting all the, uh, uh, the, the the sensors, and then there's the understanding, and then there's the like uh, logic, where uh, the, the the car decides to go from one place to another. But in, if you're trying to create a robot that kind of cleans up your 16 year old kids their room, it's kind of problematic. So the new paradigm that uh, uh, NVIDIA decided was to, uh, let me jump on this, uh, it was to create a new uh, API that uh, works with decider networks. Decider networks are kind of like a state machine, but they have their uh, memory where they got from. So. Uh, the, the thing is this, you see this uh, robot festo is moving, uh, someone's moving a, a block and the whipper's going and taking it, and he's, each time he's kind of uh, looking at his state. Now, it, he really doesn't care where the, uh, to stack the blocks, he, he doesn't have a preferred order, but just changing uh, the, the algorithm or the, the logic of this is kind of complicated when you have a system that you just program it. What uh, Isaac Cortex is doing a part of it is, is it's a kind of letting you only change the, the difference in the leaves that are a deciding over the order. Now, let me get to this. This is the more a important part. The thing about Isaac Cortex is think about it as the brain of the robot. And you could connect it to the real world and it's getting the perception on the level of the perception. Think about it as the replicator, everything that has to do with the computer vision. And then it's trying to understand the world model and the logical states, getting 3D objects and, and, and understanding what's on top of the other. And then there's this, the design networks that I just jumped over before. It's, uh, I didn't have time. But uh, and then the, and, and the action of the decider work, it networks uh, are really simple. It's just take this box and put it to another place. Now, when you want to have intelligent policies, a good example is putting Isaac Jim inside. So Isaac Jim is like an intelligent policy. You're telling him to walk from a, on top of the steps to the to the elevator, but you're not talking telling him how to walk. So that's where Isaac Jim comes in. So it, this is my next game that I'm going to play with. It's a it's a, the, the development kit that they run in AGX. And what I'm trying to say is that it's, there's hardware in the loop. So everything that you saw, you could, you could just program on it in this. And if you want any more uh, info, tomorrow we're having a, a, one second, a workshop. And uh, I advise you like, to sign up. It's, uh, it's going to be talking in depth to all the stuff that I was talking about and uh, just uh, come to me after the session and you can ask me anything you want. There's Iran here. So uh, that's it.